In 2017, five guys rode three and a half thousand miles across the Atlantic Ocean to break a world record. It's natural to feel nervous because, you know, it's going to be the biggest expedition of my life. Along the way, we encountered huge mechanical issues, rough seas, horrendous weather, and social problems. Teams arguing, a bit of a late point. And this is our story. Teammate Duncan and I met when we drove to the skipper's house in Amsterdam a few months before the expedition would start. We'd meet the other team members on the way. We were the Atlantic allies for the mission to row from Europe to South America in under 50 days. Over a weekend, we received a crash course in ocean rowing. With demonstrations of life on board the boat, the routine, demonstrations of safety equipment, and the routine for different groups on work and rest. After weeks of back and forth, we assembled in Portugal in early December and set about preparing the boat. We took Rose, our eight metre long boat, out for sea trials and brought as much fresh food to keep ourselves in the best condition for the expedition. We'd not known each other long, only a matter of weeks, but together started to get to grips with what this challenge was all about. After 10 days of preparing and waiting for the right weather, we finally set off. The first few weeks were challenging as we endured seasickness, getting used to a very simple routine of two hours rowing followed by two hours of rest. Our bodies didn't take very well to it straight away as our hands developed calluses and our joints ached. Between rowing shifts, we get two hours to sleep, eat, and wash all the salt water off us from the waves. The seats were padded, but it didn't replace the sores we developed from the repetitive motion. Routine was just bearable. We're about 50 miles north of Lanzarote where we're stopping. So at the moment we're literally having to steer the boat like this, digging one oil into the water, running around the middle. After a seven hour long battle in rough seas, we finally land in Tenerife on Christmas Day. The charging problems that impacted our safety and navigation equipment and a broken rudder that meant we couldn't steer it. We were dejected. It looked like the expedition was off. We started contacting families and friends to tell them that our months of preparation had been lost. But against all odds, we found a workshop that could repair our broken rudder and engineers who could rectify our charging problems. It was late December. We got ourselves prepared to go again and get the boat sea ready and lowered back into the water. The world record is off, but the expedition is still going. We've had <clears throat> probably one of the calmest days we've had so far uh, and the chance to get out of the sun. So first of all we've had two drive-bys uh, which is two ships who've come in within 
two nautical miles of us. Um, come to first one came to rescue us because the Coast Guard said that our EPUB was going on when it wasn't. And the second one just came in close just to see who we were or popped up on their identification system. What else happened? Oh, we saw a whale yesterday. We saw um, uh, within about 10 meters, this whale just popped up out of nowhere, uh, blowed a load of water. <laughs> Probably one of the best wildlife experiences we've had. And then, last night, we got attacked by flying fish for about four hours, bombarding us with various sized fish. Uh, Duncan got hit in the head with a pretty sizable fish, yes, which, I did. <laughs> which he said felt like a, a punch. <laughs> and the fish had the audacity to not even hang around. But the calm weather didn't last for very long. So we had probably one of our hardest nights last night. Um, we had some pretty big waves, spent most of the evening being soaking wet. Uh, two hour shifts, we were just constantly covered in water and being thrown around by a massive swell going behind us. Uh, waves coming to our, to our right hand side as well. Pretty exhausted right now. Instead of it getting better, things went from bad to worse. <sighs> Where to start? Okay, so we're now like, two days away from stopping in Cape Verde, which will be our second stop, um, because we're not managing to get enough power um, at the minute, which yeah, it's been hard, I'm not going to lie actually, we had to stop again and power anchor um, two nights since lands were open, due to not having enough power. Then be crammed up in, in this tiny cabin here with, you know, two other blokes and three of us all together over six foot, it's it's ridiculous. That sort of, it's almost like a throwaway comment like, oh you're on power anchor. Until you've done it, it is so horrendous. we made to the solar panels didn't solve the charging issue, so we were forced to stop in Cape Verde. We limped into the port and set about getting our boat repaired. The expedition again looked uncertain, there's no guarantee we would be able to get the issue sorted this time. What I'd not prepared for was how many things were going to go wrong and to what scale. And that really is the essence of Hersham Rowan, I guess, and the challenge um, is getting through yeah, getting through those issues and, pre and prevailing. Yeah, the world record's off, but at the end of the day, that was always the added extra. The, the challenge is to row across the Atlantic Ocean, which is what we're doing. But after seven days of not knowing, we got the green light that the solar panels were fixed and so we could prepare for the final leg, rowing to South America. We're exhausted. The physical and emotional challenge of this expedition was really starting to show. We're up to day 50 and we're about 24 hours away from the 1000 mile point, i.e. 1000 nautical miles between us and French Guiana. So <clears throat> coming up to the home straight. Also for round purposes, it's the last day of January tomorrow again, so that'll be another month we've got out of the way. That'll be the second. And looking like an estimated time of arrival of the 14th of February in French Guiana. The ocean has given us a huge battle, but we're going to make it set two world records. After we leave Cape Verde, we get some incredible news. No team has ever rowed from Africa to South America before. So if we make it unsupported, we'll set a world record. But the excitement is short-lived, when the roller skate bearings on the seats give way, meaning we can't 
use our legs for the final thousand miles of the row. And our luck got even worse when we bend a rigger that holds the oars in place, meaning that one of the three positions is now out of action. But we keep on pushing. It's nothing compared to what we've just been through, and we're determined to make it to the finish. Rose has thrown us a few curveballs in the last couple of days, but we're yeah, so we're still taking it in our stride, and I don't know, I really think after tomorrow, I think we'll be on the home straight. That's, I think, how I'm going to feel. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just really excited, actually. After over 50 days at sea, our bodies are battered and bruised. As you can see, the weather's pretty shitty here. Seven days away from French Guiana. And the rain has just come right in. The sun and salt water has really taken a toll on our bodies in the boat. And then the current slows as we get nearer to the finish line, meaning that the arrival date keeps getting pushed back. So we clear some stowaways off the hull to improve our speed. Fifty miles away from South America, and we've just rowed over three and a half thousand miles. As we edge closer to South America, the excitement really starts to mount. We finished the expedition looking nothing like when we set out. But what really matters to us is that we faced our adversary and came away triumphant.